thank you for joining the Merit Based Incentive Payment System call for promoting interoperability measures and improved in activities webinar. During this webinar, CMS will provide an overview of the annual call for measures and activities process for the promoting interoperability and improvement activities performance categories. And after the presentation, CMS will take as many questions as time allows. So now I'll turn it over to Vidya Selipin from CMS to begin. Thank you very much, and thanks to all of you for attending. Today we're going to be discussing the details about the annual call for promoting interoperability and improvement activities. Um, it's call for promoting interoperability performance category measures and improvement activities. Next slide, please. Before we begin, I just wanted to point out through this disclaimer that the information provided in this webinar is intended to be just a general summary. It's not intended to take the place of either the written law or regulations. So we encourage listeners um, and readers to review the specific statutes, regulations, and other interpretive materials um, for a full and accurate statement of their contents. Next slide, please. In today's presentation, we're going to provide a quick overview of the Quality Payment Program, a quick overview of the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS, an overview of two of the MIPS performance categories, promoting interoperability and improvement activities. We're going to discuss the call for promoting interoperability measures and improvement activities, which began on February 1st. And then we're going to provide a couple of slides um, with resources and app an appendix with information um, about these um, this call for measures and activities. Next slide, please. So next, we're going to talk about the quality payment program. Next slide, please. So in a nutshell, um, the Medicare and Ac Medicare Access and Chip Reauthorization Act of 2015, or MACRA ended the sustainable growth rate, or SGR formula, and required that CMS implement an incentive program that we refer to as the Quality Payment Program, or QPP, which provides two participation tracks for clinicians. The first is the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, which is a performance-based system, and the second is Advanced Alternative Payment Models um, for clinicians who participate in an innovative payment model. Through the QPP, CMS is able to reward high-value, high-quality Medicare clinicians with payment increases while at the same time reducing payments to those clinicians who aren't meeting performance standards. Next slide, please. Next, we're going to quickly go over the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS. So MIPS is comprised of four performance categories, quality, promoting interoperability, cost, and improvement activities. The points from each performance category are added together to give you a MIPS final score. Within performance within each performance category allows clinicians the flexibility to choose the measures and activities that are most meaningful to their practice. The MIPS final score is compared to the MIPS performance threshold to determine if you receive a positive, negative, or neutral payment adjustment. Next slide, please. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the call for promoting interoperability performance category measures and improvement activities. Next slide, please. The annual call for promoting interoperability measures and improvement activities um, began on Saturday, February 1st, 2020. And this process allows eligible clinicians, professional organizations, and other relevant stakeholders, including beneficiaries, to identify and submit measures for consideration for these categories. In this call for measures, um, we are accepting submissions for promoting interoperability performance category measures and activities for the improvement activities performance category. Um, the call for quality measures for the quality performance category um, is not going to be reviewed in this webinar, but is also underway. Next slide, please. The MIPS final rule provides an annual list of promoting interoperability measures and improvement activities each year um, that's published in the Federal Register in, the no in November of the year prior to the first day of the performance period. 
So the final promoting interoperability measure specification and improvement activities will be available on the Quality Payment Program Resource Library, um, and the address for that is qpp.cms.gov. Next slide, please. So specifically for the promoting interoperability measures, um, for the call for measures that we um, that is underway, we are specifically interested in submissions for measures that build on the advanced use of certified EHR technology, or CERT, using the 2015 edition of um, certification and standards criteria. We're interested in measures that promote interoperability and in health information exchange. We're interested in measures that improve program efficiency, effectiveness, and flexibility. We're also interested in measures that provide patient access to their health information. We're interested in measures that focus on reducing clinician burden. And um, as a bonus, we definitely want to incorporate measures that align with the MIPS improvement activities and quality performance categories. Again, the submission period for it has begun for both promoting interoperability and improvement activities on, um, on February 1st. In order to submit um, submit measures for consideration, um, you can submit a submission form to the email address CMS call for PI measures at gdit.com. The submission form includes um, details such as the me measure measure description, measure description and program relevance, measure type. So measures can be categorized as either an outcome measure, a process measure, or a patient safety measure. Um, the reporting requirements for the measure submitted, so a numerator or denominator description, or a yes-no statement, or any exclusion criteria, and any CERT functionalities that are utilized, if applicable. CMS will review measures and evaluate them for applicability and feasibility. Promoting interoperability performance category measure specifications for current and previous years are available on the Quality Payment Program Resource Library at qpp.cms.gov forward slash about forward slash resource dash library. Next slide, please. And here is just a screenshot of the information that's available on the um, submission form. Um, again, the submission period um, starts started February 1st and goes through July 1st, 2020 for measures for the 2022 um, performance year. Next slide, please. And next, I'm going to turn it over to Angela McLennan to discuss the call for improvement activities. Thank you, Vidya. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us to learn about the call for improvement activities. I'm Angela McLennan, the CMS lead for improvement activities, and I'm going to give you some information about that. Um, right here, we have a list of our criteria that we use when we're considering improvement activities for inclusion in the program. Examples, I, I won't read them all out for you because I do believe you'll be getting copies of the slides, but examples of the criteria that we use to evaluate include um, feasibility, evidence that supports the activity has a high probability of contributing to improved beneficiary health outcomes. Also, we look for submissions that include a public health emergency as determined by the secretary. And we also look for activities that we are able to validate. So we need to be able to have documentation that proves that the activity was in fact performed. It's also very important to note that we at CMS look for activities that are higher than the standard of care. By this we mean that we are not looking for activities that represent commonly accepted guidelines. So what does this mean exactly? For example, a proposal to emulate, I'm sorry, implement a hand washing improvement activity wouldn't be accepted because CMS expects that clinicians would be practicing proper hand washing techniques within their practice settings. 
or a proposal to implement an IA that would give clinicians credit for installing antivirus software on their computers would not be accepted because CMS, the CMS expectation is that practices would be taking the proper precautions to safeguard patients' personal, personally identifiable information. Instead, we are looking for improvement activities that go above standard of care and truly drive practice improvement. Next slide, please. Okay, here on slide 15, we're gonna get into a little bit more about how exactly do I submit an improvement activity for consideration? I'm sure that's probably what you're asking yourself at this point. As Vidya has mentioned, the submission period is now open and will run through July 1st of 2020. When you're getting ready to craft your proposal, we first suggest that submiss submitters familiarize themselves with our current inventory. That way you can ensure that proposals don't du duplicate existing improvement activities. And when I'm talking about duplication, I don't mean necessarily that you're sending in a verbatim duplication. It can also be a conceptual duplication. Also keep in mind that we want improvement activities, as I mentioned before, that are feasible for others to implement. It's important, again, to note that we need to be able to validate the activity. So really think about what documentation a clinician can provide to prove that your proposed IA was performed. That's extremely helpful to us. Next slide, please. Activities proposed for inclusion should be sent using the Improvement Activity Submission Form to CMS Call for Activities at abtassoc.com. We will take a look at the form in just a moment um, so that you can get an idea of what's included there and what we're looking for. Once you submit your form, all communication regarding your proposal, including any follow-up questions we may have, and determinations will come from the CMS Call for Activities email address. Slide 17, please. Some important dates here for you to note. All proposals submitted by July 1st, 2020 will be considered for inclusion in the Quality Payment Program Year 6, which will begin January 1st, 2022. Any proposal submitted after July 1st, 2020 will be considered for inclusion in future years. Slide 18. Now here is that form I mentioned, the um, Improvement Activities Submission Form. Please pay attention to the directions and note that all fields must be filled in for consideration. Provide as much information and documentation as possible Please be clear about what the activity entails and what will be required. It's really difficult for us to evaluate proposals that are missing information and leave us guessing the submitter's intent. Also, if you intend to propose a program as an activity, please note that only existing programs will be considered. We will not approve proposals for programs that will be implemented at a future date. We do uh, understand that sometimes circumstances can change and there are situations that may cause a program launch to be delayed. But we also must recognize the frustration eligible clinicians feel when they want to select an activity only to find that the program in question is not up and running yet. So please be sure that anything that you propose is something that is currently implemented. Next slide, please. It's very helpful if you indicate which subcategory you believe your proposed IA will fall under. And you can see here the improvement activities subcategories include um, beneficiary engagement, emergency response and preparedness, population management, expanded practice access. You can also provide as much supporting validation documentation as necessary to help us determine if your IA would be feasible to implement. Next slide, please. Also, we would like to have you explain your rationale for level of effort required for your proposed IA. This helps us to assess the proper weight for your activity. So it would help us to determine whether the activity should be a medium weighted activity or a high weighted activity. And for those of you who don't know, 
the medium weighted activities, depending on your status, are worth 10 points and the high weighted are worth 20 points. So that's why level of effort is important to note. Next slide, please. We are also accepting proposed modifications to existing improvement activities. You would need to include a rationale explaining why you believe the improvement activity should be modified. I mentioned before that we will not accept proposals that duplicate existing improvement activities. Duplicate concepts will not be considered for inclusion as new improvement activities. However, instances where you propose to include a program or initiative as an example under a particular improvement activity may be considered for inclusion in our validation criteria. Next slide, please. Now we're going to take a look at some available resources um, to get what we're calling our Call for Measures and Activities Toolkit. You can go on the QPP site and look in our resource library and you'll find the overview of fact sheet, the improvement activities call for activity submission form, as well as the promoting interoperability call for measure submission form. If you have any general questions, please feel free to email qpp at cms.hhs.gov. This is um, directly contacting our Quality Payment Program Service Center, or you can call 1-866-288-8292. And if you have uh, specific questions about the improvement activity submission, you can email the email address I referenced earlier, the CMS Call for Activities at abtassoc.com, or the Promoting Interoperability Measure Submission email if you have specific questions for the promoting interoperability team that would be the cms call for pi measures at gdit.com next slide please okay i will now turn things back over to lauren and i thank you again for listening to our presentation Great, thank you. All right, so now we're about to begin the question and answer portion of today's webinar. Um, just a slight change from what you see on the slide. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, please submit the question by a questions box. All you'd have to do is type in your question um, to the box on your GoTo screen and press submit, and then we will ask it out loud to be read. Um, so while we wait for a few more questions to come in, we did have a few general questions come in. Um, so can you please clarify the improvement activity subcategories? I'm sorry, someone would like us to clarify the subcategories? Yeah, but if you could just go back over what the subcategories are. Oh, sure. No problem. Um, so there are eight of them, and the first one is achieving health equity. The next one is behavioral and mental health. We have beneficiary engagement, care coordination, emergency response and preparedness, expanded practice access, patient safety and practice assessment, and population management. And I just wanna say, um, you don't have to get too hung up on, on that portion of it. We, we're really looking at what your suggestion is. It may be that we determine it fits into a different subcategory and that's fine. It won't make or break your submission if you don't get it correct, because that, that's not where we're looking for. We're just looking to see what you're thinking and what you're suggesting. Perfect, thank you. All right, uh, next question is, can you please clarify the deadline for submitting for improvement activities? Sure, it is July 1st, 2020. So you have a few months to get your submission into us. Great, thank you. All right, your next question asks, how do they determine who the stewards are of various improvement activities? Um, how would they learn what organization submitted an improvement activity or not? We currently don't publish that information. Perfect, thank you. All right, um, next is a bit of general information. Um, have 
basically participants always been able to submit uh, for IA and PI activities each year, or is that something new for this year? We started it after for improvement activities after the first year of the program. The improvement activities was new with the um, implementation of the merit-based incentive payment system. So to get the program off the ground, we did a call um, internally, and then we did a public call. So um, anyone can submit, and I just want to reiterate that it's not required for um, improvement activity credit. It's totally voluntary if you would like to submit. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, uh, next question is on the patient relationship codes. If they had a question about that, would they contact QPP or another uh, organization? So this is, we're focusing only on call for improvement activities questions and call for PI measures questions. So if you have any other policy related questions, you should direct those to the service center. Perfect, thank you. All right, next question asks, if we wanted to work with an organization that designed an improvement activity, um, although CMS cannot publish information, are they able to direct to any other avenues um, that participants may take? Um, we would have to take that question offline. I, I'm not sure about that. All right, lovely. All right, next question. How soon will the 2020 improvement activities be released? The 2020 list is already available on the QPP um, website page. It's in the resource library, and it, I, I'm assuming that you're talking about the um, Explore Measures and Activities tool where you specifically look up um, the improvement activities on the uh, what we're calling the shopping cart. I'm not sure uh, an exact date when that will be available, but I know it'll be available soon. But the resource page is where you can look for the inventory um, for now because it is, it, it is there. Okay, perfect, thank you. Sorry, I... Someone, I guess I wasn't um, updated. Someone was just telling me that it the uh, Explore tool is up currently. So if if it is, if it's there for 2020, you'd be able to look up all of the 2020 improvement activities. Sorry, last time I checked, it was not there. Perfect. Thank you very much for clarifying. All right. Next question asks: When would an organization be notified if their improvement activity was accepted? You would be notified um, this summer, sometime either the late this summer or early fall, as to the status of your submission. Okay, great, thank you. As a reminder to everybody on the line, this Q&A will only focus on the annual call for promoting interoperability measures and improvement activities. Um, if you have questions concerning general MIPS or QPP, please contact the QPP Service Center. Um, we will wait a few more minutes for more questions to come in. Again, if you do have any questions on the call for PI measures or improvement activities, uh, please just submit your questions via the chat box or on your screen, and we will read it out loud. All right, one more question just came through. Um, if they submit measures or improvement activities and they are selected, can you please clarify which reporting year they will be selected for? Sure, they would be um, available for reporting year 2022. And that's because we have to go through rulemaking to get them published.
Great, thank you. All right, next question says, if you're submitting improvement activities as a group, do all providers need to be involved in the improvement activity? It, do they need to be involved? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about in performing the improvement activity. Um, they certainly don't have to be involved in crafting the submission, but um, for the performance of the improvement activity, the threshold has increased to 50% of the clinicians need to be performing the activity, and they can do that for any continuous 90 days within the performance period. Great, thank you. All right, we'll give it a few more minutes. Again, if you have a question on the annual call for promoting interoperability measures or improvement activities, please submit it via the chat box and we will read it out loud to be answered. Okay, in the meantime, while we wait for more questions, um, could you please just clarify the emails again for submitting safe improvement activities and promoting interoperability measures? All right, as a general reminder, um, the submission forms are now online at the QPP Resource Library. You can find that at qpp.cms.gov forward slash about forward slash resource dash library. Um, the email addresses are on the submission forms there, and you can find there are two separate emails for both improvement activities and permitting interoperabilities. Um, so please reference that. All right, well, it looks like we have no further questions on the call for measures. Um, so, Vidya, we can pass it back to you to conclude. All right, thank you. Um, thanks to everyone who um, joined today. Again, at the, um, the, the call for measures and activities has begun and goes through July 1st, 2020 for um, the performance year um, 2022. Materials, um, for this webinar will be posted within the next two weeks on qpp.gov and thank you again for joining.